Thank you for joining us for today's message. We believe we can go anywhere in the world from right here in Lamarck, Texas and reach people just like you. If you'd like more information about Abundant Life, please visit ALCC.org. You can also text the number below if you would like to support the church financially. Be ready for a powerful message that's gonna impact your life. One of the things the scripture talks about that becomes inherent is iniquity. Iniquity is the, uh, if you were in the morning service, you'll have to get it. Uh, I have a, a couple of chapters in this book from this day on that I wrote uh, a few years ago. This particular book was nominated for Charismatic Book of the Year. And it is a, uh, a powerful book. Uh, it's a wonderful book. Uh, it was produced by Creation House. And uh, it, it is, once again, a powerful uh, word. Dr. Oral Roberts, before he went to heaven, actually wrote the foreword for it. And he was a very dear friend of this house and a friend of ours also. I actually went to Oral Roberts University and I thank the Lord for that. And in this uh, book, I take time in the book and I talk about uh, what iniquity is and what it is not. Uh, in Exodus 20, uh, the Bible says, God speaking to Moses, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. And so we are people who keep the Ten Commandments. They are not ten suggestions. They are commandments. And God was not trying to take our fun away from us. He's trying to keep us alive long enough until a revelation came on the inside of us that breaks us free from those areas that iniquity sets up in. Iniquity is a, oftentimes it is an inherent weakness in the soul, in the nature, for a particular sin or sins. Uh, every generation, the Bible says, iniquity waxes worse. It is passed on from the fathers. It goes to the third and fourth generation. That's not one time in the Bible, that's multiple times in the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you actually read the Bible as Christians? Well, you'll find it in the Scriptures, of course. And if you come to this church, we'll teach the Word. And it is there. And that's why you see so many things that uh, have uh, gotten worse and worse. The Bible says that iniquity waxes worse every generation. It gets stronger and it's stronger in a generation. There will be a time, the Bible says, when that iniquity will be full. And when the iniquity becomes full, the iniquity of the Gentiles, when that becomes full, the Bible says Jesus is going to change this dispensation. Uh, but it gets worse and worse and worse. Iniquity does. And mankind was trapped in that. Uh, they, were, they were locked up in that because they could repent and they could get set free. Have you ever known someone, and don't raise your hand because I may be talking to you or the person next to you, have you ever known someone who's really not a bad person, but they've got just, just two or three little things that just chronically uh, the devil seems to be able to pull the string and, and manipulate them by those things. And then they wish it was not that way. And uh, I, I've noticed when not long after we moved here that, uh, and we began to pastor, I noticed there were some wonderful people that about twice a year they were in the altar just repenting and weeping and I'm thinking, man, those people, they almost have wings. You know, they, they got halos and stuff. They live so uh, desirous of serving the Lord and live so strong. But they would, uh, they said, well, I've just got a couple of areas in my life and, and it just seems like things trigger them. And I wish it wasn't that way. And this particular uh, principle from the Word of God is what set them free. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And a lot of times those things have become repetitively seated on the inside of people's emotions and their mind. But thank God Jesus came and at Calvary, uh, and it was prophesied way in advance, Jesus said, God said He would be bruised for our iniquities. Uh, he was wounded. He, a wound is an external bleeding. He was wounded for our transgression. A transgression is a sin or the act of sin. Uh, Iniquity is the internal weakness, the motivation. 
about 75% of all of the quote unquote sin that you, uh, that mankind could get involved in, you can resist that with your own mind. You can just decide, I'm not going to do that. Can I get two amens right there? Amen. But then there are people have weaknesses sometimes. And those weaknesses are as valid as a strength. And many times they are inherent in the nature. But thank God Jesus knows how to set us free. Hallelujah. And it's all because of His blood. And when we by faith, come on, shout faith. faith. When you by faith know that Jesus is the sacrifice, He broke the, uh, the very chains of, of sin, transgression, and of iniquity. God was not using those terms because He's trying to conjure up as many words that mean the exact same thing. Those were not the same things in the Scripture. They're different words in the Hebrew also. And God is very plain when He talks about those. And they begin to hold people down. Israel had a, an iniquity for idolatry. And about every 40 years they went back into idolatry. They would get set free and there was something about it. They would, they would stop making Jehovah God the God of their life. And suddenly they would have idols and they would, they would have trees and they would have all type of things the Scriptures talk about. And they would revert back to it. And it was almost as steady as clockwork. About once a generation you would see that take place in them. That was an iniquity. And the Scripture says those iniquities would hang on like that. David said there were sexual iniquities. Uh, the whole uh, sexuality is from God. That's what makes you male and female and creates that attraction. It gets real quiet in these Methodist churches when I tell the truth. Can I have a big hallelujah? But it's very necessary, of course, that you harness those things and that you keep yourself uh, in a moral or an upright way. If you fail to do that, uh, that you will begin to create iniquitous natures in sexuality. And in time it begins to pervert. It begins to get worse. And generation after generation... And so you might have just been looking at a girly magazine or something. I'm talking to you guys, all you women I'm sure are perfect. You might have just looked at girly magazines or something. Or told uh, off-color jokes, uh, sexually you know, uh, wrong jokes that you really just ought to say one, impure type of things. Everybody likes to laugh and all of that, but it doesn't need to be impure. Can I have an amen? amen. And, uh, and, or maybe you came out of a, a line of families that did that a lot. But it will get worse every generation. It begins to morph. It gets worse. And when the enemy tries to get a foothold in a family and in a bloodline, he'll try to do that. And the next thing you know, homosexuality will appear uh, because it has perverted preaching real good. We're not mad at anybody. We're just telling the truth because the truth is what sets men free if they have that truth in Jesus. And so those things begin to uh, seat in families and in individuals, and they can pass on and pass on. But thank God uh, we are not trapped forever with that. That's why it was so bad what happened when Adam fall, he opened that up, that iniquity would come in, of course. And when iniquity came in, it passed on, the Bible says, to all men, and it, it, it produces death, spiritual death, uh, if it's left unchecked. But thank God you can sever those iniquities in your life. And you can be empowered in your weakness. God will make you strong, the Apostle Paul said. It's very necessary that we understand that. At Calvary, the sacrifice was made for us. Jesus did not just die. Uh, he was wounded for a reason. God is not a masochist. He wasn't into mutilating His Son and torturing His Son for no reason, like God was getting pleasure out of that or something. No, exactly the opposite. All of those, there are spiritual laws that God, long before you and I ever came on the scene, the Bible teaches those things. And it, it requires the shedding of blood. So God had one sacrifice. Uh, his name is Jesus, His own Son. He sent for us with royal blood, the only divine thing on this planet when Jesus was on this planet was the blood inside of His body. Uh, it was not man's blood, it was the blood of God. It was unpolluted. It had not, uh, did not have the fall in it. The blood comes from the Father. 
And thank God, uh, Jesus' Father was God and is God. And the Bible says uh, He was wounded and He shed His blood. He shed His blood seven different ways. Uh, those of you that have heard us teach on the blood know that. Uh, seven different ways Jesus shed His blood uh, at Calvary. And the Scripture says the, the wound was for our transgression or our actions of disobedience toward God. And He was bruised for our iniquities. Iniquities are the internal motivation in the soul uh, that uh, normally are passed on. They are inherited. It's not the sin of the fathers. Listen to me. Look me right in the face. It's not the sin of the fathers. Uh, we do not inherit the sin of the fathers. The Bible says the iniquity, which is the, the affinity for a particular sin or sins, that we have to get dominion over ourselves. Every man, the Bible says, will answer uh, for his own uh, transgression, his own sin. But iniquity is that thing that motivates people toward that. But glory to God, the Scripture says He was bruised for our iniquities. So Jesus not only shed blood externally, but He was bruised, which is an internal bleeding for the internal weaknesses that we have. Oh, glory to God. And the Scripture goes on and says, He was tortured for our peace. King James uses the word chastised, tortured, whipped, beat, stressed for our peace. We can have peace with God in a very disturbed world many times. And with His stripes, whoo, hallelujah. And with His stripes we were healed, Peter said in 1 Peter 2, 24. Thank God if we were, then we are. Amen. Amen. And we hold on to those covenant promises, and by faith we bring them out of the unseen realm into the seen realm. It's the same way with iniquity. Uh, every person should get before God personally and become, as my father used to say, ruthlessly truthful. Be truthful with yourself. Be truthful with God. You're serious about your life. You wouldn't be here on a Sunday night if you're not serious about your life. I'm not going to mess with your mind. I'm not, I'll never mess with anyone's mind. I'll show you in the Word of God, then you take that Word and you apply it personally, privately yourself. And you make that decision. If you fall, the Bible says, I love how the Scripture says it, uh, if you uh, ever uh, have a, a fall of any kind, the Scripture says a righteous man will fall seven times, but he'll get up. God will hear him and he will get up. And you can be sure if it takes 70 times 7 a day, if you have to repent 500 times a day. You, you tell whatever that iniquitous thing is that's trying to hold you back into your yesterday. You just say, no, in Jesus' name, uh, I've broken your dominion off of my life. The Word says the blood's been applied. I have applied it by faith. Too many times we think that, well, when I got saved, I got all of Calvary. Uh, the problem is that's simply not in the Bible. The children of Israel themselves were commanded in Exodus to eat the whole Lamb of God. Eat the whole Lamb. That's because many times they just kind of picked the part they wanted to eat. But the Scripture says, eat the whole lamb. Amen. And when you and I are feasting on the Word and the, the promises, the covenants of God, uh, we love that part where He was wounded for our transgressions. Thank God we can get forgiveness of our sin. Woo-hoo, grace, grace, grace. But we don't, we don't necessarily care that much about that iniquity thing because that's just between me and God. We got our own thing going. But God doesn't want you to have that in the relationship. Amen. And so His Son was bruised and shed blood. And you can by faith apply the blood. Lord, in my life, in this area, in that hot temper, and that whatever that thing is, Lord, in that foul mouth, that cursing mouth, Lord, help me. I plead Your blood over that today. Amen. You were bru bruised for me. Uh, I don't know about you, but I came from a great, great lineage of cursers. Man, they could cuss, and, and they were Marines. They weren't sailors. They were Marines. And they could cuss worse than a sailor. Y'all don't look at me like that. And you could push the wrong button years ago, and I might just join them for a little while. Thank God today we want to bless and not curse, the Bible says. Amen? So we just made some decisions. And broke those things in the name of Jesus out of our lives. 
And God will give you strength instead of just grace to repent. He'll give you strength to overcome. Amen. He'll always give you grace to repent. But He will strengthen you if you'll apply that word to your life. The reason that's important, uh, the sign of the covenant, uh, the Bible says that you have received that grace of God in your life. You've already received it. The sign of the seal of the covenant is baptism. The Bible says that Paul, in Romans chapter 4, as Paul is writing about Abraham, he said, He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised. Before, now listen to it, before Abraham, there were adults in here, listen to it, and we can understand, before he took that sign of the seal of a covenant God had made, he had by faith, come on, shout faith. faith. Say it again. Faith. By faith he had been declared righteous because he believed God. That's why God calls him the father of our faith. But God required a sign and a seal of the covenant. That's why Paul says he was declared righteous while he was in uncircumcision. And God uh, required him to take a sign of his covenant. And that was the sign in Abraham's lineage. Now, we do not have to do that today uh, because God has given us, now this is good preaching for a young preacher, God has given us baptism. Amen. Baptism is that sign that God has circumcised the heart, yes. that you have made a decision by faith. Uh, so it wasn't the sign of circumcision that saved Abraham. It was faith that saved him. Uh, his circumcision was the sign of the seal Hallelujah. of that covenant, that he had been sealed. Amen. Water baptism is a sign of the seal Hallelujah. that you have been delivered, and in Jesus' name you will be delivered. Amen. Paul said it like this, You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised. This is in Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. In, him, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off uh, the, the body, the full content of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Verse 12, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. We're about to go out uh, into uh, baptism. And baptism, yes, it's an identification. No two ways about it. It's an identification. But there's so much more in the scriptures about it just identifying. You're identifying with the fact that Jesus did not have sin, iniquity, nor any of that in his life. Therefore, our target is to live without sin or iniquity. And you cannot do that in your own flesh. If you could, Jesus would have never had to come. But because of what He did and your desire, you can apply the blood by faith. Hallelujah. And you're already saved when Jesus is your Lord. Amen. Water baptism is that sign, buried with Him in baptism. Amen. Paul said, as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Did you receive that this afternoon? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is with us tonight. We're going to go out in the uh, foyer now and we're going to baptize. Uh, there are people out there that will assist us. Uh, I think there's at least 50 people or so that have signed up for water baptism. If the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart and you decide you want to get baptized uh, tonight, you can just go right ahead and do that. But we don't do it just because someone else is doing it. Reckon the old man dead, the Bible says. Take dominion and authority and believe God that there will be a strength and a power transferred. Many people get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Numerous times we've prayed for people and then baptize them. And when they come up, oh, they start speaking with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gives the utterance. They just begin to flow out like that. Uh, some people, I believe iniquity can definitely create physical issues uh, internally. Many times people have testimonies of healing that takes place uh, because they have died to iniquity by faith. And they make that decision. 
that every single day they're going to live free from that. If you fall, rise up in Jesus' name and be set free. That's why we repent. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. To learn more, visit WalterHallam.net. Here you'll find a list of resources to help you with your daily walk in Christ.